welcome to Becoming Transnatural. Um, I'm Klaas Kuitenbrouwer, one of the two curators of the show, together with Hisham Khalidi, who is actually not here now. I hope he will. He was a bit ill, um, so I hope he shows up. Uh, the event is uh, produced mainly by Aryan Bangma, and he's also the initiator, and he hates to wave, but yeah, there he is in the back. He doesn't like the attention, but I thought he d uh, deserves it. Um, so. Uh, I'll be your host for today, uh, at least for the morning. In the afternoon, we'll go to the uh, opposite side of the street, where we'll have workshops based on the uh, ideas and notions and practices that are introduced this morning in this hall, the Volkskrant. Um, so, becoming transnatural, as we said in the um, curatorial statement, it's a bit hard to define. Uh, but somehow we know when we're there. We, we will know, we'll recognize when we're there. Actually, um, we think we're already a long way uh, uh, there eh, in becoming transnatural, in becoming um, acquainted to thinking and acting beyond some kind of opposition between technology and nature. Although in uh, the media, in um, popular culture, actually the opposition is played out largely and um, even uh, uh, in reaction to the events of uh, yesterday in Japan, you had the, the phrase nature strikes back even uh, uh, is brought up a couple of times. This is actually the kind of thinking that we're trying to get beyond. So, um, um, so, in a lot of ways we're already there. In a lot of ways we're also ahead of ourselves. We can do things that we um, are actually hardly able to oversee. So. We also realize that it's impossible for anybody to gain oversight. Eh? The idea of oversight is uh, an idea of the past, belongs to the 18th century maybe. So there's too much information, there's too much capabilities, there's um, enormous amount of technologies that are extremely powerful, uh, there's um, an urgency, eh? the time is running out. Um, we propose the idea of becoming transnatural as a kind of um, position of modesty. So as something that is, as a position of looking at the possibilities of connecting everything, looking at the possibilities at least of them, of, of um, uh, not try to be part of the problem, as we say. We don't exactly know how this can be, but we do, as, as I said in the beginning, we will know when we're there. We will know uh, how to recognize it. And the speakers of today also uh, all at least in our opinion, that's why we brought them here, all hold a clue to that connection, all hold a clue to um, not being uh, the enemy of the other side, no matter which side you're from. Uh, we have, uh, so, uh, that the both sides being briefly stated as nature versus technology. So all speakers today uh, hold a clue to that, um, uh, going beyond that opposition. Um, so all together, actually, becoming transnational is a bit of a narrative proposal. Uh, also, the show you will see in the afternoon um, it brings works of the speakers of today and also of a lot of other people, but it also brings together a couple of texts, historical and new, and actually a couple of science fiction texts, uh, uh, par uh, parts of stories that together paint a picture, a kind of intuitive picture of how a world beyond that opposition might feel, might look like, might, might, might actually act, and how we may act in it, how we may be part of that. Um, so we have, um, let's say, proposals of, for becoming transnatural. Well, this is not necessarily what the speakers themselves propose, but this is why we brought them together. B but allow me to say that we bring together proposals for becoming transnatural today, um, some of which are belonging actually to the quite distant future. Some seem fairly far-fetched, but are actually part partly realized. And some are actually ways to look at things that are already happening, things that we already do. Uh, we'll start with Sasha Povlep, designer, artist from, um, actually originally from Germany, who uh, studies at the RCA in London, uh, based in the UK now, who will um, well open up, uh, I think, both a historical and a future vision of um, uh, uh, hi approaches to be transnatural. Sasha Povlep. <laughs> Uh, my name is Sasha Puflip, as Klaas said, and um, um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to juxtapose a project um, we show on this show to kind of, to something I've been 
doing synths as part of a project called Synthetic Aesthetics. So this is, um, <coughs> this is what's currently in the show. And it's actually, it was made at the RCA in London, the Royal College of Art, where James and Jimmy are teaching, and um, made in collaboration with somebody called Daisy Ginsberg. And um, it's a series of seven, seven plants um, um, from the future, that kind of, or from a future where something like synthetic biology, which is kind of this um, engineering-minded approach to biology or to genetic engineering, has come true in a way that you can, um, um, that you can make plants grow things for you. And um, so basically it's a collection of seven plants, and you can later look a bit closer at them, um, that together in seven, like make seven parts that come together to, to make an object. And this, um, mode of, this mode of illustration we've shown is actually taken from, inspired by somebody like Ernst Haeckel, this like natural history illustration things um, from the um, 18th century. Um, that's kind of just sitting, sitting on the bridge of like um, on the brink of industrial revolution, where people actually were trying to look at nature as beautiful machines, or kind of to see to see like pa patterns in nature. And you have something like um, taxonomy, where people kind of collect or like prospect for life forms, and then kind of make beautiful drawings to kind of like categorize them and everything. And we kind of consciously use that because we think there's something really interesting in the way that um, these kind of things and and the way we are trying to do that now, what I'm going to show later, um, are kind of like coming together again. And what it does actually to kind of briefly, to briefly um, sum that up is actually make an herbicide dispenser. So um, that's kind of the first object that you would want to have in that future. So you have to imagine um, in, the, in, this, in this kind of future, and it's actually a NASA image from the, from the 70s, factories will become farms. So we have these giant greenhouses as you find find them sometimes in the Netherlands, again, apparently in Spain as well. Spain is said to be, I learned recently, is much bigger than the Netherlands and kind of having massive greenhouses. So basically, you would have this greenhouse which is full of um, plants that make things or generally are engineered to do something that plants normally wouldn't do, but um, um, they're kind of, they're, since they're not natural plants, they're quite vulnerable to kind of the pressures from, from other plants or kind of their, their milieu, the natural environment. So basically the first thing they need is an extended defense mechanism. So this herbicide dispenser, if you go back, that like snaps together from these plants is something that somebody would go around with and actually kind of try to keep the old nature out because inside, like inside the factory, the new nature is doing its thing. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be an important tool. And basically what that implies is, um, it's a quote from Paul Rabino from his book Artificially in Enlightenment, is that nature will be known and remade through technique, <coughs> meaning human technique, I mean what we call technology, and finally become artificial. So that was kind of the init initial, initial assumption we started out with in this project. So you basically, you understand what things are doing and then the understanding kind of implies modification if you want. So like you sequence the whole, uh, you sequence the whole DNA, and then you figure out what every what every bit is doing, and then you can kind of start to modify it yourself. Um, but actually, I, I would kind of like to extend to kind of like extend that a little bit because because since our thinking or my thinking has kind of moved on a little bit, so um, I think it's actually interesting to ah oh shit, it's really dark um, to look at um, industrial revolution things again. So <laughs> didn't really see, it, but there's machines. And the back, and there's like a smoking chimney, you barely see that, and then um, you just about see that. And then there's animals in the front, so there's horses, and there's donkeys on the right, and people working. So basically, um, what Industrial Revolution did is kind of um, replacing animal power, or like life form power, with machines. So in this image, you really nicely see the transition because the donkeys that you don't see. <laughs> actually <laughs> are bringing coal to the machine. So you have this kind of like, it's just at the, at the, at the edge basically of the transition between the technologies. And I want you to, to keep that picture actually in mind for later. And, um, and what I'm currently really interested in is the notion of the machine. So like how does our notion of the machine as a technology change within that context? And um, thinking about machines, machines are time-based object per definition because, I mean, everything exists in time, but if you look at different notions of the machine, if you imagine like a steam engine or like a car, I think a car is quite a good example, it runs and 
it does its thing and then it breaks, but it's existing, it's time. And if you look at genetic engineering, and especially if you look at um, synthetic biology as a, I don't know how familiar you are, you are with that, but synthetic biology is basically, um, it's kind of like, it's not quite a rebranding of genetic engineering, but it's like a very, very engineering minded way of looking at biology. So basically it says like, if we understand enough from how life forms work, then we can kind of turn them into um, little factories for fuel or for, I mean anything basically, you could produce, in an ideal world, you could basically produce anything that's kind of part of the living realm. So anything your body is made of or anything, I mean any, anything could be kind of made if you know how, you know, if you, have, you, know, if you know how to design them. Um, but still it's worth keeping in mind that, that if you look like at bacteria or plants, it's alive and life has an agenda of its own. So if you contrast something like that, which is like growing E. coli um, bacteria with something like a steam, I barely can see it, um, something like a steam engine, it's very different. So there's metabolism, that there's growth, and um, it lives in time as well, but like it's a, there's a very different, there's a very different kind of like twisted because they have an agenda of their own. So, and one of the agendas is they don't break, like usually machines break, but they might die. But on the way to like dying, um, there's like a, like, like they have an interest not to die. So that's the first thing and they're kind of like, they, they replicate and there's evolutionary pressure on them. And this, I mean, change. So it's kind of, it's a very different, it's a very different way. And it becomes even clearer if you look at the, some of the wording in these things. So it's like a very classical engineering thing and that's what you call a chassis. So it's kind of the thing that the car sits on and I mean, there's everything kind of gears and it's made of steel and that's what you call a chassis. And in synthetic biology, that's what you call a chassis. So it's the same E. coli bacteria, which is kind of the model organism for this um, top-down engineering synthetic biology. So like you understand enough and then you can try, you can engineer them. And actually this thing is fairly well understood and it's, I mean, a lot of kind of like biolo biological machines have been built out of this life form already. Um, but for me, it's like really, it's really striking that they call it a chassis because it's such a, it's such a clear marker of like a transition of one mind frame into like a really different realm. And I think actually, if you don't want to call it chassis, and it's it's actually quite obvious thing, but um, it's a body, isn't it? I mean, it's not a chassis. It's kind of every living thing, like one thing that every living thing has is a body. So um, it's kind of. Um, it's um, quite a simple thing, but I think it's different. Uh, it's um, important to keep in mind.